Hello my wonderful people, good morning to you all though. Happy Thursday to all my fans and family out there. Anywhere where they will make it just calm down. They collect your own greeting as I do way salute this early Thursday morning. They say make I carry this uh bonga waka. Come on a doorstep this morning though to do pam 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 here. Make on I just accept me the way I am. Make when I hear this breaking news, oh, Marzi Simon Eba, he don't come out oh, to the reaction oh, of uh, newly appointed uh, service chiefs or oh, the demotion and the retirement of all the other service chiefs that are doing nothing other than squadronization of the funds meant to equip the military. So make when I hear what Simon Eba have to say concerning this very issue. Biafra agitator. Simon Epa reacts to Tunumbu's appointment of service chiefs and other parastatals. So my wonderful people, now here we will test out our news. Oh. Before I go into the main news or the main reason why we are here this morning, please, if you never subscribe to my channel, endeavor to do that as soon as possible. Make sure you turn on the notification button so that we will notify you we'll go live or post something on this channel on this, or any other channel related to Okute Daily Talk. Oh. Without not taking much of your time, neither do I want to take mine too. Please, start in your seatbelt because we are about to take off this very morning. Marzi Simon Epa, a popular Biafra agitator and separatist, had reacted to the new appointment of a service chiefs by President Bola Amer Tunumbu. Epa, the Finland-based lawyer and prime minister of the Biafra uh, uh, Republic government in exile, in a statement through his official Twitter handle, said the development could not quell the call for a Biafra referendum. Recall that Tunumbu sacked all service chiefs on Monday and appointed uh, their replacement, including Rear Admiral Emmanuel Ike Chuku Ogala, Chief of Naval Staff, who hails from uh, Ibueze, Enugu, Southeast. However, reacting to the appointment, Eba wondered if, uh, if uh, it will rid Tunumbu's government of perceived imbalances. Let me see or hear what Simon Ekperima have to say on this very issue. According to him, the appointment will not end the pervasive uh, diversity and challenges of the Nigerian government that are propelling the Biafra regulation agitations. I have observed how uh, ignorant Nigerians are reacting to the appointment of new service chiefs and I laugh. What magic will the new service chief do? Will they remove Shetima as the vice president? Will it change the Islamic State agenda, which is the reason for the insecurity and terrorism all over Nigeria? Will they abolish the 1989 Abuja Declaration? The answer to the above uh, questions is no. It doesn't change anything, he stated. He added that. Then I read that uh, he appointed someone from Enugu State as Chief of Naval Staff. And I laughed. The chief of naval staff has always come from the south. Will, they new, will the new service chiefs stop Biafra from exiting Nigeria? Will they abolish the 1999 constitution? Will they abolish the 40 amalgamation of Nigeria? Will they recover the ancestral land that was invaded by the Fulanese across Nigeria? He stressed that these are the fundamental issues that, brought, uh, that bring uh, about the dangerous and destructive diversity propelling the Biafran liberation and will push it to a conclusive end of independence. Biafra liberation is on top gear and our goal is to ensure nothing works in Nigeria until Biafra exit, existed, according to Mazi Simon Ekberima, the Finland-based uh, lawyer and also a politician in, in Finland. In other hands, though, uh, this uh, our sister, we in Embu, Alison, designing Madeke, he don't carry Wakao, go to the go to uh, EFCC and uh, their organization. You understand me? And as it starts now, the EFCC and the Asset for Future, they are the court don't fix day to hear about everything because uh, designing to EFCC to court over her asset uh, for future date. Make on here. Waiting this our Tifi Tifi sister got to say about this very issue. A federal high court in Abuja has fixed, fixed October 23 for hearing the suit filed by former Minister of Petroleum Resources, uh, designing Alison Madeke, challenging the order obtained by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC for final for future of her assist assets. I thought if somebody go to court, that person is supposed to be present. 
to uh, answer to the courts or to, to be answerable to the courts. Each time she was being called, but she's nowhere to be found. Hmm. Nigeria is a joke. Justice in Young Eko fixed the date on Wednesday after Alison Madueke's lawyer, Benson Ebanoi, and the ESG councils, MD Baraya, legalized their uh, processes in the suit. The news agency of Nigeria, that's NAN, reported that the anti corruption agency had planned to conduct a public sale of all the assets seized, regarded as proceeds of crime and ordered by courts to be permanently forfeited to the federal government of Nigeria. The auctioning exercise conducted on the seized asset believed to include designers' property start, uh, started in January 9th of this year. The immediate past chairman of EFCC, Abrasid Bawa, recently revealed that $153 million and over 80 properties have been recovered from Aleton Madeke. She was alleged to have escaped to the United Kingdom and remained there after her exit from public office as a petroleum minister, an office she held between 2010 and 2015. Just only five years, this woman tipped Nigeria down. Under the administration of former President Goodluck, Jonathan. But the ex minister, in her suit, sought an order extending the time within which uh, to seek leave to apply to the court for an order to set aside the EFCC's public notice issued to conduct a public sale on her properties. In the motion marked uh, FSC slash ABJ slash CS slash 21 slash 2023, dated and filed on January 6 by her lawyer, Chief Mike Ozekome. The former minister sought five orders from the court. While Alison Madweke is the applicant, the ESCC is the sole respondent to the said suit. The former minister, who argued that the various orders were made without jurisdiction, said these ought to be set aside ex debito just a date. <laughs> this is what they used to confuse the gullibles in the society. She says she was not given a fair hearing in all the proceedings leading to the orders. Can you come back to Nigeria and for the self, uh, uh, for the uh, 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 self hearing? I be set, uh, uh, set hearing, yeah? mm, fair hearing. The virus court orders issued in favor of all of the respondent, and upon which the respondent issued the public notice, were issued in breach of the applicant's right to a fair hearing as guaranteed by Section 36, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution as altered and other similar constitutional provisions, she said. She argued that she was neither served with a charge sheet and proof of evidence in the, any of the charges, nor any other summons, howsoever and whatsoever in respect of the criminal charges pending against her before the courts. She further argued that the the courts were misled into making several of final for future orders against her assets through suppression or non disclosure of material facts. But the ESCC, in a counter affidavit deposed to by uh, Rufai Zaki, a detective with the commission, urged the court to dismiss her application. Zaki, who was a member of the team, that investigated the case of criminal conspiracy, official corruption, and money laundering against the ex minister and some other persons involved in the case. Said the investigation had clearly shown that she was involved in some of acts of criminality. We hereby rely on the charge FH slash ABJ slash CR slash 2008 slash 2018, dated 14th November. 2018 filed before this honorable court and has attached as SBC in the applicant's affidavit, he said. ESCC operative have said he has seen the ex minister's motion, uh, said most of the, the, uh, the dispositions or the positions were untrue. He said, contrary to her disposition in the affidavit in support, most of the cases that led to the final forfeiture of the contested property were actioned in REM and were had at various times and determined by this honorable court. According to him, the court differently ordered the commission to do a newspaper publication inviting parties to show cause why the said property should not be forfeited to the federal government before final orders were made. 
Zaki argued that uh, one name the Awa Kalu represented the ex minister in reaction to one of the forfeiture applications. We humbly rely on the judgment of Honorable Justice ILN Uibo, dated 10 September of 2019, shown in SBC of the applicant's affidavit, he said. The officer said, contrary to her, that the final forfeiture of the assets that we are subjected to the present application was ordered by the court in 2017 and that was um, and that and that uh, this was not set aside or obtained on appeal according to him the properties have been disposed of, uh, of through due process of the law this one is concerning uh the Zane Alison Madeke, who nearly chief Nigeria dry. Lawyer, retire police bulls all security agencies to arrest and question Asare Dokubo the Mumuman. The National Legal Advisor of the Association of Police Retirees under the contributory pension secure Ofem Obetan DSP retired and retired superintendent of police Ewara Ebiang Enang have called on the different security agencies in Nigeria to arrest and question Asari Dokubo, a Niger Delta militant leader, over his reported continual incitement or insightful statements. Both were guests at the Let's Talk Nigeria, a, a flagship with a sparkling FM radio morning discussion program in Calabar Cross River State. The entire security personnel all the federal government to call Dokubo to order immediately and investigate his claim that the top military men, particularly the Navy, are neck deep in bunkering and oil thefts, and that his army is responsible for the securing some parts of the country and not the Nigerian army. This one is inciting words. And Nigerian government, the EFCC, the DSS, and other security personnel have not seen it deemed or are not said it is deemed fit to invite uh, Attorney Dokubo for explanation on what he meant by that. They also refer to the trending video on social media where he's seen with arms, disparaging the Igbos as slaves and dismissing the capacity of Nigeria's security strength. He has been making inciting public statements. These statements are outrageous and have the capacity to cause disaffections and public anger. That Dokubo is making these hateful statements and parading with arms calls for very urgent action by security agencies. So that it can be a deterrent to it can be a deterrent to others, and so that uh, other young men do not think they can behave similarly and go scot free. S. P. Enang said. Obetan also insisted that the boss alleged statement against the Igbos in the trending videos on social media, where where he referred to them as slaves, be investigated. He said the militant leader statement and allegations should not be waved aside, maintaining that. Such impunity against the state must must be well handled. Phone in phone in callers also condemned the impunity with which the militant leader disparaged Ibos and his comments about controlling security networks all in Nigeria. Atiku Abubakar, PDP to close case against Numbu's election June 20, 22, 2023. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku, Wazirin Adamawa Abubakar, and his party will on Thursday, June 22, today, close their case in their joint petition challenging the declaration of Bola Metunumbu as the winner of the February 25th presidential election. The prisoners, according to pre hearing report, we are supposed to clear do their cases on Tuesday, but their late council chief Chris Uche San brought to the notice of the presidential election petition court that they lost two days out of the days allotted to them and asked that the two days be, be returned. The petitioners who told the court during the pre hearing season that they would call 10, 100, uh, 100 witnesses have only presented 25 witnesses so far. In other words, Speaking with newsmen, counsel to the petitioner said they might call additional five witnesses to do what? To have a round figure of 30 witnesses. Uche said some of the documents to be tendered in the remaining two days will take the place of the remaining 70 witnesses. We are closing our case on Thursday. It was supposed to end today, Tuesday, but because we lost two days, one of which was the June uh, 12 public holiday, the court will actually extend our time by two days. 
Uche told newsmen after the proceedings. Earlier in the proceedings, the petitioner lamented the difficulties encountered in getting certified through copies of documents out of the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC in aid of their joint petition challenging Tunumbu's election victory. At the resumed hearing of the petition, counsel to Atiku and his party told the court that getting material from INEC is like getting weapons from an opponent in the war. He told the court that getting documents from INEC was very difficult, but commended the legal team of the electoral body headed by Abuba Kamamud, San, for their assistance in getting some of the documents from INEC, which replied for a stand down in the proceeding to enable the petitioners mark the deluge of documents made available to them Tuesday morning. Meanwhile, counsel to INEC came in Penhiro San told the court in his submissions that INEC officials brought the documents from all over the country and that the petitioners are here to pay the, for the certification of those documents. He said it was incumbent on the petitioner to prepare a schedule of documents they wish to tender. The court ruled for about 10 minutes to enable parties in the petition put her together and find a way forward with the documents. When the parties reconvened, Uche reported to the court that they have agreed that the petitioners go back with the documents, prepare a schedule of docu documents, and mark them for tendering on Wednesday that happened yesterday. The five-member panel of the justice of the court, led by Justice Simon Haruna Samani, adjourned till Wednesday 21 for the continuation of the hearing in the petitions. Ex-Chief of Naval Staff Gambo reportedly refuses to hand over to successor Despite presidential directive, Wahala well, not the finish. <laughs> the former naval chief, Awa Zubairu Gwambo, despite the presidential directives, had chose to remain in his position. <laughs> uh, 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 the man, don't, he don't hold ground, say, <laughs> if you so desire, come and come at me by force. Nigerians just learned that Gambo's reported uh, Action is coming two days after President Bolambe Tunumbu sacked all service chiefs, including him. Recall that Tunumbu, after sacking the service chief appointed by ex President Mohamed Buhari, decided to appoint fresh chiefs. According to source that spoke with the people of the Gazette, Gambo plans to leave office on Friday after stealing, settling several financial matters, including payment of billions of naira to contractors and naval officers. Why the other service chief have obeyed the president's order, Gambo remains in his position citing unresolved issues. He insists that he is responsible for releasing funds to the Nigerian Navy and will not leave the office until he fulfills his obligation. He wants to steal the final money before he leaves, so you people should allow him because Nigeria and Cruz, everybody does, every, do, do, do the way you like. Nobody there questions you. A source from the Nigerian Navy headquarters in Abuja that spoke with the platform said the chief of naval staff is still here we have been begging him to comply with the order of the president and vacate office for the new person that was appointed this one a plan here because that place particular place is the place that appointed emmanuel ogala to take over <laughs> this session that will happen now when trouble come back now you tell emmanuel ogala to wait maybe in the next four years <laughs> the appointed said he was responsible for the release of the funds to the Nigerian Navy and will not be leaving office until uh, entitled contractors and naval officers have been paid. South further stated that uh, he has insisted that the payment of contractors may be delayed by his successor, even though he was assured that the Navy would meet all valid con uh, contra contractual uh, obligations. A senior naval officer that spoke with a platform said he wants to pay contractors himself and other naval officers some billions in capital. We have never seen anything like this before in our service. He should realize that any action he takes after the present public announcement is null and void in the Nigerian Navy, of course. Additional, additional, additionally, Gambo is looking to, to distribute millions of dollars for emergency repairs on the NNS Arado, a large naval ship. This decision comes despite recommendations that the ship be decommissioned and transferred to a naval museum. 
He also mentioned that he was uh, finalizing payment for the repair of NNS Arodi despite the conclusion that the ship to be recompensed sent to Naval Museum, a source close to them said. The Navy under Gambo had reportedly budgeted $200 million for the repairs, even though he was advised to take the ship first commissioned in 1980 out of service. But he refused. He wanted to scandalize these $200 million. Yoruba activist Sunday Ibuho promises to return Nigeria makes demand from government. Yoruba right activist Sunday Adayomo, popularly known as Sunday Ibuho, had declared his intentions to return to Nigeria, maybe to come to join his brother on during Nigeria. He reassured his followers of his imminent return to Ibadan in, the, in Oyo State, signaling that his activism is far from over. In a widely circulated video, Ibuho claimed that Nigerian government owes him 20 billion naira in compensation as the courts have uh, acquitted him of all charges. Ibuho said, I'm coming back to Ibadan. I am originally from Oyo State. I'm coming back home so Yoruba should not be afraid. And nothing will happen. Nobody can make the other, other persons afraid. The question I asked the Nigerian government was in place and the court had justified my demands. Also, the 20 billion naira Nigerian government owes me will be paid. Ibuho fled Nigeria in 2021 for Kotonu, the Republic, following a manhunt launched by the Department of State Service, DSS. This occurred after a raid on his uh, Ibadan residence where DSS operatives discovered weapons. He was arrested and detained in the Benin in the Benin, Benin Republic, but eventually released by the court after numerous proceedings. Ibuho, ever since his release from detention, has been silent about the move for the Yoruba nation and have failed to return to Nigeria. I'm leaving Nigeria police force better than I met it. Ex uh, IGP Baba Alekali, look at this a woman. What? 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 Do you? What? What? Anyway, I don't. Let me know. Use the derogatory words. The immediate past is for the general of police, Usman Alekali Baba, has said that he is leaving the Nigerian police force better than he met it in two years. Baba expressed the belief that he added value to policing in Nigeria, adding that he has created pathways and made giant strides for the new force leadership to leverage in his quest for a better police force. He said this on Wednesday when he officially handed handed uh, to the acting inspector general of police, Kayode Ebu Tokun, at the first headquarters in Abuja, the nation's capital. The former police board stated that a steady progress had been made in all components of his promise to change policing narratives and restore the dwindling police image. According to him, he said, as I exit the leadership of the force today, I believe that I am living it better than I met it. I believe that I have added value to policing in Nigeria. I told the firm conviction that steady progress has been made in all components of my promise to change policing narratives and in our journey to restore the dwindling police uh, uh, primary within the internal security architecture of this country. We might not be there yet, but certainly the pathways have been clearly defined. Firm foundations built and giant strides were taken for the new force leadership to leverage on his quest for a better police force in Nigeria. Baba Alkari Ahmed said he has addressed the welfare concerns of serving and retired officers and enhanced the operational capacity of the, of the force through the procurement of critical operational assets. The SIGP further noted that his administration set out to positively change the policing narrative of the country by laying out a well-articulated vision and mission objectives. He added, in this regard, I pledge to address the welfare concerns of serving and retired officers and enhance the operational capacity of the force through the procurement of critical operational assets. I also set out to reposition the special detachment of the force, particularly the Marine, A-Wing, Special Forces, Police Mobile Force, uh, counter terrorism unit and special protection unit, while also striving to enhance the intelligence capacity 
of the force through the push for the upgrade of the technical intelligence assets of the Nigerian police. In addition, my vision was to modernize the environment in which police operations across the country in order to make them befitting and fit for purposes. This informed the concept of modern police stations and barracks, as well as the model state police headquarters and model police hospital, which were constructed across the country and the remodeling of the force headquarters. My vision was to also evolve a police force in which abuse, abuses associated with the promotion regime will be addressed and the process made credible enough to truly motivate personnel why the age-long challenge of rank stagnation will also be tackled. I also envision a force that will adapt to modern dynamics of crime. Hence, the establishment of Nigerian Police National Cybercrime Center with the support of the Central Bank of Nigeria aside from this, my leadership projection was to enhance the manpower profile of the force and deepen the professional knowledge of officers in coping with the challenges of policing a diverse nation as ours and optimally managing the complex dynamics of modern crimes and internal security threats. This informed the push for the sustenance of the recruitment drive and the huge investment in training and the capacity building across all ranks. The last but not the least, Presidential Tribunal concludes hearing in Allied uh, Parties Movement Petition against Tunumbu. The Presidential Election Petition Court on Wednesday concluded the hearing of the petition by the Allied People's Movement against President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu and All Poverty Congress APC. The general report that APM concluded its case against Tunumbu APC, Shetima and Kabir Masari after it called one witness to testify before the tribunal. APM is challenging President Bola Tunumbu's election on the ground that his running mate Kashim Shetima was not qualified to contest, having allegedly engaged in double nominations. Petitioners, lawyer G.O. Idiabonya presented his client's case by calling a witness Aisha Abubakar, who described herself as the APM assistant welfare officer. Idia Bonya made the witness adapt her five written statements on oath and tender some documents through her, following which uh, he announced the closure of the petitioner's case. She was cross-examined by the lawyers to the respondent during which the May 26th judgment of the Supreme Court in the case by the PDP where the Appeals Court heard that Shitima never had the double domination was tendered. The respondent elected not to call evidence but to rely on the May 26 Supreme Court judgment and letter and a letter dated uh, June 12, 2022, notifying INEC of the withdrawal of Chetima as a senatorial candidate of the APC for Bruno Central Senatorial District. After listening to all the lawyers in the suit, the chairman of the panel, Justice Haruna Samani, directed the respondent to file their final written address within 10 days from Wednesday. He ordered the APM to file its written address within seven days from the date of the respondent, filing and adjoined the hearing in the suit until July 14 for the adoption of written addresses. So, my wonderful people, I don't hear them all. Listen, I will talk every now and then that Nigeria is a banana republic, not one to. Nigeria have already turned to banana republic. Believe it or believe it, there's nothing that can change this narrative. Nigeria is now an animal kingdom whereby a man will come out and threaten wild side of the region i mean a region that is capable enough a region that fought the country and sustained it even with 20 pounds being given to them at the end of the no uh, uh, victim no van uh, vanquished in 1970 after the Kubo came out single-handedly insulting the whole Igbos. my my greatest surprise self and annoyance is that no anything Igbo have ever said anything concerning what i the Kubo said all the prominent Igbos, all everybody have went into hiding. Now they are scared of Hazard Dokubo. What a world. What a world. Okamana Mandibo. No waiting they be. 
You ain't where my wonderful people I beg you, make on you this one to step down water. Come your way again, I see the man you wanna do only, you could talk. You never subscribe to my channel, you never do that as soon as possible. Make sure you like, share, and also comment on any of my content. It is very, very important and very, very necessary. Come your way again, I see the man, you could talk. Bye for now. Kemesiano. Okay,